and welcome back to Scav Talk, everyone. Today's episode, we're going to be catching you all up on the Tarkov news since it's been about two weeks since we last cast, and we had to reschedule due to some scheduling issues, but we're back, getting you all caught up. Followed by, we're going to be going over the Arena update that's recently launched, including the microtransactions that's going to be lumped into the news. Don't worry, I know you're all foaming at the mouth, we're going to get to it. Then we'll be talking about some in-game weapons, things that me and Giga have been looking at, and then we'll round off with some hideout money-making and gray zone warfare raw footage gameplay. Sounds good. <sighs> so we got we got a lot to get through, so let's just let's just jump straight into it. Where where do you want to start with the news roundup? So bosses, just just a quick Quickie here, bosses are up to like what 30%, if I recall. I think so at this point. Yeah, I'll go and quickly check, but I think that is the case. Let's see. Just use use killer, for example. He is yes, 30%. So okay. <sighs> yeah, that's been my week is when I have played. I haven't played a lot. Um, but man, just like hunting the games is just it's soul crushing. So, but you know. Yeah, because <sighs> what are they at? Are they on are they the same? I can't remember what percentage yeah, they are. The same. Same I, I, I genuinely feel like they should be buffed to like a higher percentage because mm. they are like one in four technically. I've heard things, I think Logical said this somewhere, but I, I heard something that like how BSG does the spawning for bosses is and you would think like your server, like when the instance created, it rolls, you know, a number that mm. lands the odds than the boss spawns but apparently it's like pre-rolled and it's determined and sent out to the servers pre well i don't know it's basically in other words you could just be super unlucky and the rolls could all be on like the eu servers and there's only like a handful of like na servers or something I don't know how true that is, but if that's the case, it wouldn't surprise me because, you know, BSG just loves doing things differently. <laughs> but <laughs> regardless, I don't know. I probably play like 50, 50 customs raids just because I think that's the easiest map to find them on. Like it's the, the most equal distance from most of the mm -hmm. spawns. They're kind of like in the center map versus like some of the other options. Um, and I've seen them once and they were already dead. So I don't, I don't know. I'm just... I don't. I don't know if I'm gonna make it a cap gig. I'm gonna be honest. I I just downloaded and installed Cyberpunk. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I started a a D and D campaign with some some oh. live action. Well, not live action, but you know, Discord role play. <laughs> That's cool. Like, uh, how much do you actually have to do for Kappa? Is it just I, the games? Or is it something? It's is it like some other Summit G One G Phone. Probably some other random item that I forgot about. Goons and Tagilla, but like I don't, I can do I can do Tagilla grind any other day. It's just like I just want to get the goons done, you know. I mean, it's just yeah. like, but I, 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 like I, I'm just at the mercy of whatever crazy and like the goon tracker stuff. Like it's all bullshit, man. Like it, it says it will say customs. I'll go customs. Mm. or not there. I just I don't know, man. I don't know whether that thing used to work better than it does now because. I think it did seem to work, or at least people reported it working more. But I've seen lots of people saying that like it just doesn't really function now. And I also heard the theory that you were talking about that it's not like a thirty percent; it's a thirty percent like for servers or something. And right. I don't, yeah, again, it's I don't like, really understand what that means particularly. But it was like you know potentially affecting it, and like you can run ten raids and never see them, kind of thing. And that's not even just down to random chance. It's like something's like strange about the calculation. But like, this is my problem with Kappa in general: is that. You feel so compelled, right? And you spend all this time, like mm -hmm. genuinely, just like wasting your life trying to do this stuff. <laughs> Stop. And then you, <laughs> and then you get near the end, and then you don't even want to do it because it's so annoying. Yeah. This is like one of my least favorite parts about Kappa in general, because then it's just like, why, like, why did you, why did you spend all that time doing it? Right? You could have played Hell Divers with your friends that like you were talking about two weeks ago. Giga, and shut then, up! <laughs> Stop speaking facts. <laughs> and it's just like I don't know. That's the thing I hate the most about it. I, I guess. I guess that is why people do target like the hardest things first, but you can't really just like, oh, I'm just going to only go do the rest of it if I kill the goons like now, like, you know, a month ago or whatever. It's, yeah, that's uh, you know, at least you've got killer me. done. But yeah, it's just like, what, what do you do? Do you leave those hard things till the end? Like, I, it's hard now. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's getting down to like where it's the classic issue. 
uh, you know, late Tar- for me personally, late wipe Tarkov. I know it's only like two, three months, but this phase in Tarkov, there's not a lot yeah. to do. Everything's kind of like meaningless. Money is just like a, just a number, literally. Like it's whatever. <laughs> um, and you know, tasks are kind of like far few between. You just have these really annoying ones, and it's like, what's the cap even gonna do for me? Nothing. Just you know, nothing could be like, hey. Back in my day, kids, I spent three whole months of my life grinding for cap. <laughs> it's like, who gives a shit? I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's nice getting it one time. But somebody pointed out to me as well in stream, and I apologize because I can't remember who it was. But they pointed out to me that it was really weird that there's no achievement for getting Kappa. Mm. Which is really odd because obviously the Kappa container doesn't follow you through the wipe. Sure. Whereas at least the achievement would, right? You'd have that on your account forever, even if you yeah. only did it the one time. So it's like, it's like I don't know. Like they should really put an achievement in for Cap, in my opinion, based upon that. I'd never really thought about it before, but it was really strange. I was like, well, I guess it's because people have the armband and stuff. It's like, yeah, but then it gets wiped. So like, you know, you want to have that on your account at least. As, uh, you know, people can see it. You know, you did actually get it one time. I don't know. It, yeah, it, it's odd. I mean, this is, it's one of the reasons why I decided not to bother and I didn't mm-hmm. even bother trying because like, yeah, in the past, I've just kind of like brainlessly followed along the Kappa path just to do it. And I get two thirds of the way there with the one third of the like utter garbage, difficult tasks remaining. Mm-hmm. And then and then it wipes. And then I started all over again, which is why I've been prioritizing just more like interesting and fun things this time, which has been better. And usually that means I end up running streets over and over and over again, <laughs> because it is an amazing map. And yeah. I've been having a good time on streets recently. But uh Oh man, no, I'm I'm, I'm a kind of like I'm kind of sad for you. I kind of I wanted to I wanted it to happen, but yeah, like how can you force the goons to spawn? And like they're so annoying it's to kill just... anyway. Have you killed any? Have you even seen them? Then is that you haven't even I've killed seen them any? Dead. Right? You've seen them dead the one, one time. time I, what I, what happened was I spawned pretty close. I threw a grenade and I heard the voice sign. I was like, okay, this is it. Like I can't screw this up. And I played it like really safe, and I went like all the way around behind stronghold, and then there was like. I don't know, maybe that, maybe I heard something towards Skeleton. So I went there, and like by the time I got there, you know, went through the the blue fence opening underneath Sniper Scav on the tower. There was just their bodies were there, and they were like completely stripped. Like they took everything. They even took the FMJ ammo out of their mags of the on their pistols. Oh like there was there was literally like an M4 that was like completely stripped, mm-hmm. and. The dude's uh, radio backpack. That was it. Like, it was stripped clean, bro. So <laughs> I was like, well, that's what I get for playing safe. I prop, maybe I messed up by throwing a grenade and it pushed him over there. I don't know. It's just. Yeah. Like I said, I probably played like 50 raids in the past two weeks. And it's just, it gets to the point where it's like, oh, they're not here. Like, I could speed run reset, but I just end up running around and like dying and doing stupid stuff because like I'm trying to trying to keep my sandy intact but we'll see man i might you know i might mess around and do it some more but it's it's not looking good i'm uh, like you said i'm just kind of like <laughs> you know what what's the point of it all if i'm not having fun like who cares it's literally a pixels like i can photoshop yeah, exactly. the kappa and, and take a the only shot. thing is people keep talking about it being a longer wipe we have no idea if that's actually the case or not mm-hmm. i will just very strongly point out there is no indication that it's gonna be a long wipe at all other than people just like reading into stuff um, the few things that people have read into is, you know, pushing ammo and weapons back further up the traders, blah, blah, blah. But I think that's mostly to do with the, the armor system, to be honest, and balancing rather than anything else. The most compelling argument that I've seen is the, the lengthening of the time it takes to get to max strength, and max endurance. Um, that's like you know, maybe a sort of compelling argument that BSG want to, you know, extend it out so people don't get there quite as quickly. So they're still grinding towards the later stages of the wipe. I don't know. But that being said, we're two and a half months in. You've probably still got three and a half months to do it. So, you know, you can literally <laughs> I'm not play for that long. <laughs> no, no, but as in like you can go away from a month, play Cyberpunk, go and, you know, yeah, uh, do just... your D and D, whatever, and then come back and you know, if you feel up for it then then you've got that option. Um maybe it'll be like a mad rush in the last two weeks. You'll be like, Oh crap, I do actually really want to do it and you, you know, you do it then. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Probably not. But... I, I feel like knowing me, once I'm out, I'm just like Yeah. I'm kinda out. I mean, that's kind of true as well, in just in terms of like doing the thing. Because once you're out of the practice as well, like you're not right. as effective. If you do meet them and then they kill you, then that's probably going to be definitely it. The PC's going out the window <laughs> at that point. Um, 
Yeah, that's uh, to be fair. Like um, BLP and chat was saying, they just need that hundred percent goon spawn event. Yeah, so, like, maybe, maybe I'll do that. Do, maybe I'll play. Do the, once... other, do the other parts, play the other bits, do all the do all the kills, or whatever, and then yeah. we'll get like a goon spawn event, and then to go in and kill them and get and collect your kappa. You yeah. know, that's probably the best. That's actually probably the best strategy at this point. <laughs> to, to maintain my sanity, yeah. In all seriousness, yeah, to maintain your sanity because that's important. <laughs> yeah. So, boss spawns are up. Mm-hmm. Um. What else did we have in EFT that was not arena related? I don't think there was that much in the main game. Um, well, any other changes? I can't remember now. Two weeks is like I've already forgotten I what know. happened a week before. You know, I think the only thing really is micro more microtransactions. Yeah, we could talk about that now because that's the main game, I suppose. Brand so, new. Well, not yeah, really new. <laughs> hot, off, hot off the press, they did another website update, which usually means them linking MTXs in some way. Mr. Logical put out a, a tweet showcasing all of the different changes. You have to pick the, the kit that goes with your faction. Obviously, if you, bear a, if you buy a bare <laughs> piece of clothing and you're USEC, you won't be able to wear it because you don't have those options in the shop. Um, the first iteration of these cosmetic microtransactions all are pieces of equipment that exist in the game already. They come as a set, of trousers and top pairing, and they range between, there's three for each faction, uh, $5, $7, and $12, depending on which one they are. I think the, I don't know, like, I don't think people care about, like, so USEC, for example, the $5 one is the USEC Woodland Infiltrator. That's like one of the relatively early kits anyway. $7 is the USEC Night Patrol. And then the $12 one is the USEC Urban Responder, which is the level 50 piece of clothing. You have to get to level 50 to like buy it from Ragman. Um, and I think some people don't really like that you can buy the level 50 stuff. Some people like did actually genuinely want to grind to 50 to get those things. And when you see somebody with that in the game, it's just like, oh, you know, you, you recognize the clothing in game and go like, oh, you know, they, they've ground or whatever. But like now somebody can just go and buy that. On the bear side, it's actually like more weird in my opinion the five dollar one is like the bare old school kit which is the telnic upper and the old school lower the telnic upper is like the level is the level 50 one mm-hmm. like kind of the same as the urban responder but for bear and it's the cheapest one on mm-hmm. the bear like cosmetic store which is weird the zaslon in the middle which is i think the 50 i looked it up a minute ago i think it's like level 55 and then the bear g99 uh, i can't remember see the level maybe that was level 45 and then the bear g99 is level 55 Something like that. Doesn't really matter. $5, $7, and $12 again. So now, like, the, the stripy shirt, um, which is the bare one, that's, like, probably the most distinctive, I would say, out yeah. of all the clothing. It's usually a pretty big flex when I see it. Yeah, it's another one where people are, like, you know, some, a portion of the player base is annoyed about that, and, like, everybody else doesn't care. I think is really the way it is. Like, some people, that was, like, part of their reason to getting to level 50 and part of the reward for them to be able to flex off that they, you know, I've achieved that level, and when somebody sees them in game without even killing them or IDing them or whatever, like you, you can know all, that automatically high level. tell. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And so now, I think I don't Trey put out a quite funny tweet about it, which I don't have it up, but it was basically along the lines of, you know, when everyone and, and whenever anyone sees me in the you know the high level kit, they just think I'm a loser. Now they now they don't know whether <laughs> I'm a loser or whether I've just you know paid for it or whatever. Um, some people kind of came from it from the angle of like, you know. Uh, it, when I see those kits, I, it, it changes the fight. Like I change how I play. You know, if you know somebody's level fifty, then it's like, okay, you know, I am going to have to play like meta, I suppose, rather than just like messing about. Um, I, I don't know how much like that really matters, but I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. like my personal opinion. I do think it's a shame they didn't like make something new to put with the microtransactions to start with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's probably a test for them just to see whether people do it. They are persistent through wipes, I want to point out. So once you buy it once, you have it forever. So you, at the beginning of the next wipe, you're going to be able to put on the bare stripy top straight away. That's important to you. Um, yeah, I think it would have been good for them to put the one at least, just like put one kit in for each team that would have been something that you couldn't necessarily grind to or maybe like add something new that you could grind to as well. That would probably be the best way. Yeah, I was going to say, because there's a lot of people calling for like, why didn't they add anything new? But like if they do that and it's you can only get it you're buying it wouldn't that like upset these types of people even more maybe yeah so you have to kind of add it to the shop too like if that would have been the perfect thing i think add one extra thing also add it to the shop make it like high level mm. as well 
you know, that would probably have been a bit better. Whereas like doing this feels a little lazy to me, but ultimately if people want to buy it, they can buy it. it doesn't affect me. I don't care. Like I'm really not bothered. Like I think mm -hmm. some people were asking me on stream. I feel like the, the I feel like the staff space one is like more controversial in my opinion. And um, I'm very, you know, whatever about that as well. But with mm. the cosmetics one, it's just like, I'm never going to buy these. This is just not something yeah. I'm interested in. I never interact with games in this way. You know, I've got, I mean, I know you've actually got more than me, but I've probably got, what well, have I got on Dota 2? I've got 2,000 hours in Dota 2, and I think I probably spent like £12.50, like total, um, because like we were messing about one day and I bought like one skin for one hero that I was playing like nonstop, something like that. So that's like the very exception where I've ever bought the cosmetic. I've never, I literally haven't bought cosmetics in any other game. Um, but interestingly, for example, in like World of Tanks, I did buy more storage space so I could store more tanks, right? So like that mm -hmm. is kind of something that has value to me. It's got like a, not even just a quality of life, but just like a variety of gameplay kind of thing. Um, and sort of the same with the stash space in, in Tarkov for me too, which is like, you know, I could do more stuff. It's just more flexible, just easier, whatever. Especially, and with content, it's kind of easier for that as well. On stream, you can just throw stuff in because the stash is huge. Don't have to sort it on stream. There's kind of a business angle there too. Whereas with these cosmetics, I don't care. Like people could do what they want. I'm really not fussed. But I, I am pleased that they didn't put the killer one in there, to be honest, because it's just a level gated thing. Like you can get to level 50 if you put the time in, that's fine. But like killing killer 50 times like it is now, that's like kind of a special achievement. So I'm glad that they didn't add that. But even, even if they did, I mean, I wouldn't really care, but I'd feel bad for the people who, who, who do care about that, if you know what I mean. I'd have more like empathy about those kind of ones than me caring like personally on a personal level yeah i guess i don't know i just i just generally don't care <laughs> i mean uh i think i think it makes sense that they're gonna do the lowest hanging fruit like what it's you know some would say lazy others may say efficient use of resources <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you're like being very like business minded about it which i'm not saying is a good thing i'm just trying to speak realistically here so I uh, I don't know, man. I, there's a lot of groaning, and it's, it's just I don't really care anything at all about it. Just whatever, man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you can go and do that if you want. Okay, so the main the main news was about Arena. I know there's yeah more or less people caring about Arena. Um, typically on the lower side, I think in general, but. I have been playing, I would say, like, a reasonable amount for me, like, here and there. I haven't played, like, a ton, ton, but I'm trying to play at least, like, one match a day. <clears throat> and I think I mentioned this last time that, that, again, it was so long ago, I can't remember what I said about it then, but I can definitely feel myself getting better at PvP. Mm -hmm. Like, definitely. You just end up in situations so much more often where you have you, know, you just screw it up and then you get immediate feedback and that feedback loop is genuinely improving like the way that i play i was talking about it on on stream a little bit um just about how i feel like i kind of plateaued in my tarkov and, and whatnot so i've been like playing it somewhat um and they've released a new patch uh, and i have honestly i've been enjoying it i have actually been enjoying it and a lot of people complain about the tier one kits and stuff but i've, I've actually been enjoying it. it's fine like the gameplay loop is, is is okay for what it is and it's mainly to link back to the main game and like get you better at playing base EFT. Kind of does that. But anyway, they've released patch 0.1.5.1. And on this, they have finally released the unranked game mode, which is really good. Uh, I haven't actually played with it enabled as of yet. <laughs> so like since, because I was, I was actually going to do it. They, they basically put the patch out like yesterday while I was streaming. And I tried to install it on stream, but then it, it was like, oh, your game's corrupted. And I had to re-download the entire game and like rebuild the game from scratch. And I was like, uh, I don't have time. Like we don't have time to like play. So I haven't, I haven't been able to play um, since then for Unranked. So hopefully the matchmaking is a little bit faster. Um, but in this one, it's just a lot more loose. So there are no restrictions on duplicate presets. You can all play the same kit if you want to. Um, same you... things for matchmaking, but there's no change in ARP, obviously. Are you tier locked at all, or is it just you could use any anything? I am pretty sure you probably are tier locked. Um, I would imagine because otherwise it just wouldn't make any sense. But there's just no matchmaking on it and no change to ARP. I, I think you'd have to be tier locked, otherwise everyone would just play like the best kit they have. It has to be. It has to be. Uh, so yeah, team fighter shootout now available. Remove the um, the team restriction on selecting duplicates. 
reduce the minimum number of selected locations to one. So you can just pick like one map if you want to play unranked. And increase the cash reward compared to ranked, which is kind of interesting. So you actually get more money in unranked. 20% in tier one, 30% in tier two, and 45% in tier three. I guess this is so that you're kind of always making money in unranked. And then ranked is the one where you could potentially lose money if you did like I don't know. The money money doesn't really matter in arena though, so I don't think it's a I don't think money's a very good mechanic in, in arena. And then they split the stats out on the career screen, which is fine. Um it's quite interesting that they've done like a few other other things that are quite good. Like matchmaking, the pre preset purchase time is down from a minute and a half to 45 seconds. Like if someone's AFK, you have to sit there for a minute and a half waiting for them to pick a kit and then it also assigns them if they get down. Because they've already pressed the accept button, right? Once you press accept earlier on in the process like it's kind of an annoying process honestly because like mm. you press go it comes up almost immediately with the accept button so you press that like straight away and there's an almost no need for like a, no a noise there because the matchmaking happens like instantaneously then you've got to sit through three minutes like two minutes of like finding a server and loading loot and all that rubbish which is uh, irritating and then it goes into the preset purchase so for me, and this is kind of a tangent. This I was, is for I've ranked got, or unranked? This, this is for ranked, right? This is for this is for oh, ranked. Okay. I've kind of got stuck halfway through the patch notes here, but like I need to I need to vent this. I kind of need a notification for like pick your kit. Yeah. Because like when I'm ready yeah. to play, like the the best way that I play arena is when I'm not bothered by the loading times, which is mm -hmm. typically and typically when I'm playing arena, I'm doing something else. I'm like working on the channel, I'm writing scripts, I'm doing thumbnails, whatever. So like I press like, yes, I would like to play a match. Accept it immediately because it pops up straight away. If I restart my game, it comes up instantaneously. I still have this weird matching bug. I don't really know why. But anyway, it's instantaneous when I first click it. It gives me the notification that like, you know, 10,000 decibels, which has been changed, but I'll come on to that in a sec. <laughs> and then you have to wait three minutes, right? But like, it doesn't give you a notification to say, oh, now you need to pick your preset. But like, I'm going to be alt tabbed for the three minutes of loading the other crap because like I'm mm -hmm. either watching something or browsing, whatever. You know? Right. So I kind of need a notification there. Anyway, so they actually did change some of these sounds. Um, they added the volume setting for the arena announce himself. So the minimum volume is 30% of the current volume. So that's actually quite low. So, you know, that's good. Most people turn that right down, I think. And then added a volume setting for the match accept notification. Like I was told that, oh, it's in the launcher. Because in the launcher previously, there was a, I can't remember what it was called, but there was a sound setting in there somewhere. And I was like, Am I like going crazy? But like this, it literally doesn't work. Like it doesn't do anything. And um, I kind of like put a message into one of the arena groups being like, this just like, this doesn't funk. Like, I don't know if people think that this is, does the, does the notification sound, but it is, it is no quieter. And I have it on like 1% versus, um, versus 100 previously. And, but what it did do is it turned my VoIPing game down to zero. <laughs> the heck, this is on like, the launcher? Yeah, so there was so in the I've just opened the launcher so I can check in the launcher, in launcher settings there was a thing called notification sound level, and people were like, oh, you change it there, and I was just like, I swear to God, it doesn't work. It's got to be for the launcher itself, not for the. It game. must be right. Anyway, so they've added they've added a proper volume setting for match accept notification. Okay, so now you could turn that down because that was like that was like twenty decibels in my ears. Like it was just <laughs> it was so loud. Like, so loud compared to everything else. Like, it was crazy. And you can put that down to 30%, which I'm definitely going to do, because, like, it doesn't need to be that loud. Um, and, uh, yeah, then there's a couple of other things. They've made the radio a little bit better between teammates um, and increased their volume. The X, So there was a weird problem before about, like, overflow XP not going anywhere. So now, so say you had, like, you know, 39,999 XP in your kit and you needed one experience to get to the next level. If you got, you know, 20k XP, you'd uh... get kick, and then it would just vaporize <laughs> 19,999 XP, which is really annoying. So now yeah. it does go down to the next preset. I don't know whether that's just like the next auto defaulted one on the left mm. tree or whether it's the one underneath it. Hopefully the one underneath it. But anyway, that's better. It goes somewhere. Like as long as it goes somewhere, I'm not as fast. And uh, yeah, but some harder penalties for killing allies in the match. So, you know, four kills down to three for the warnings um, and that kind of stuff. So people are, yeah, getting punished for team kills, which is good. Uh, and, that's, and that's basically it. So, like, it's, it's better. It's better. There's still, like, you yeah, know, there's still stuff missing. Um, but, like, the fact that they've added unranked now is good. People really wanted to have that so they could just jump into a game. I need to go and test out if the matchmaking is quicker in unranked. You can... 
go down your trees in unranked as well. So you can unlock kits in unranked. So there's no need to play ranked now. If you don't want to, if you don't want to just like, you just want to like have a bash and just mess about. People will probably play on rank very similarly that they do ranked, I would imagine, because people, I, I don't think, unless you're like near the top of the leaderboard, I don't think people take rank that seriously, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I, I don't really. Um, I use it as a, as a you know, game trainer. And um, I like definitely came to the decision early. I was like, do I care about my ARP? And I decided very early on that like, no, I do not. I do not mm-hmm. care about my ARP. So like, if I just have to like quit a match or whatever, like, fine, I, I'm going to do that. But I only play solo anyway. And so my uh, ARP is, I don't know, like 1575 or something, or like 1600, something like that. So it's like over 25 games, you know, you win 55% of them. And you're, it's a bit like, you know, playing Dota solo queue, you know, it's like your impact in a team of five is not that high unless you're actually cracked. Mm -hmm. And so if you're like marginally better than everybody else, it's like one person being marginally better in a team of four other people. So you're like at the whims of a lot of variants. So you go like, plus 25, minus 25, plus 25, plus 25, minus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, 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 minus, plus, and you gain 25 then. And it's like, it takes, it takes an eternity to go up even 100 yeah. points. Um, but that's fine. Like, it's okay. I'm, I'm fine about it. So, yeah, so it's all right. Like, I think it's, I think it's okay. The ne- the, honestly, the, the thing that they need to do, and I keep talking about this, they need to, they need to bring out the next tournament. I don't know, don't know what's going on. I don't know why they haven't announced any of them. It's super weird. I think they said originally they were going to, Talk about the, the tournament roadmap at the end of January. We're into March. There's no indication of any tourneys at all. Um, the only tourneys we've had have been organized by other people, like Hunt. I don't get it. I don't understand. I really don't. I don't know. No. Like, it's... It needs to happen. I think Walker posted um, from the ITV team, he posted a screenshot of, like, you know, upcoming tournaments, like, thing. It was, like, the official mm. graphic. And it was the Head Eyes Showdown in Hanover as number one. And then it's just like grayed out like cup, like placeholders. And he was just kind of like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. They did also, um, previous to this patch, by the way, they did change the ARP. So now it's not plus 25, minus 25 every time. It now scales with the ARP difference between the teams, I think. I don't think the players, but I think the teams, something like that. Um, for most people, it's still just going to be plus 25, minus 25, because everyone's around the same rank anyway. Um, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, think, I, I don't even know. Like, I think, I, I'm not even sure if the show, if I'd casted the show matches when we last spoke on the podcast, but, like, that was fun. But Oh, yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. Like, you yeah, it, it, did, it was fun. We didn't, we skipped that week, yeah. Yeah, because we skipped it. So, like, yeah, it was fun. It was good to do. I enjoyed it. I quite like casting and doing the announcer stuff analyst stuff whatever that I did at Hanover it was, it was good but uh, yeah it needs, like there's no events so it makes it kind of uh, kind of a bit weird so, I don't know but yeah I'm going to keep playing honestly I'm going to keep playing Arena um, on and off just here and there because I f- like it's a relatively efficient way to just like get some games in mm-hmm. like uh, like these days like there's no way to get like cheap PvP in in Tarkov like I used to use Factory Scout for that but you can't like factory scav is now just a money maker. You can't kill anybody. <laughs> yeah. Like you're not. Like, you can run around and kill PMCs. I actually did play one last night. It was really fun. There were like two PMCs stuck in the office corridor, like in, in the office you can room. Get shenanigans, yeah. And that was fun. And there was like an AI scav like at either end of the corridor. And then me and another player scav like realized that these guys were like trapped in there. And you could see like their lasers and stuff. Like you know they're both in inside and. One guy came in and just got like obliterated. And then the next guy came in and opened the door and he went in. And as he went in, I went in through the other door just after he went in through the right hand door and caught both of them off on the side and like killed both of them. And was just like, yeah, hey, that was quite fun. Like just ruined somebody's day for basically no reason. But yeah. <laughs> but like it's, it's hard to get into those moments. Like most of the time when I'm on, even if I'm looking for a PMC, like I spend three minutes just running around the map, just like, unable yeah. to find them. Like technically, there is a, a player there. In theory, but you're just like, okay, let's check gate three. Let's just check if there's any extra campers. Go up into office. Okay, no one there. Go check med tents, maybe underneath, maybe over in forklifts. And by that point, like they've already gone through cellars or whatever. Like you just, just can't find them. Like it's mm-hmm. so annoying. So at least if you want to just get into quick PvP that is like no stakes, which is honestly what I kind of need. Yeah. And I said, I said this to you, right? Like because I'm so like time poor half the time, I could do this whilst doing other stuff and like not worry too much about it. Just get better at movement whatever i'm like trying to focus on a few different things and 
you know, get my get my leans right and get my, you know, aiming correct and like actually training myself to go for headshots rather than center of mass and mm-hmm. all of this stuff. Like you could do all of that for free in arena. And it's just like, yeah, it's just free 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 training. Yeah. And uh it's good. I mean I can feel myself improving. But you, you kinda wanna you kinda need to want to get better at the main game to play arena. Otherwise on its own I don't really know what the drive is to to do that other than just, you know, yeah, yeah, if you enjoy the gameplay as, as it is, then that's also fine. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I feel like the main driver is people wanting to get better at base Tarkov. Yeah. Which it does do. Honestly, it does do. So. Good, good for you if you're using that yeah. outlet. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, do you want to talk about your budget spear? That's not a euphemism. Yeah, so I realized because I think I watched one. Of you, I think I watched your YouTube video. Um, I realized about I haven't used, huh? About the spear. Yeah, yeah. And I realized I haven't used the spear at all this way. <laughs> like I don't even think I killed anyone that had it and used it. So I went and bought one, paid like six hundred k for it, but it had all the you know parts on it. So I was like whatever. I don't know. I don't know if it's cheaper to buy it without the suppressor and scope or not i don't know but i just bought it like that and um i use it and yeah it feels really good and i looked at the stats i was like man when you think about it, this thing's kind of nutty it's like 800 rpm i'm pretty positive in most configurations it's gonna have less recoil than something like a mutant or nardi um mm. fair you know fairly decent ergo like you know 60 50 55 to 60 maybe somewhere in that range i think i don't know um and yeah the bullets is basically like m80 or like you know i don't know, like advanced like bp plus plus or something like i, I don't know i don't even know how you would like classify it it's just like it just seems it's pretty solid and then i was like hmm you know what else is similar to this the mcx <laughs> It's kind of similar, right? So I was like looking at it. I'm like, you know, it's kind of. Let me let me make a smaller window here. It's kind of got similar esque stats. We want to do window, but it's interesting too because the ammo is different, right? You can get CBJ for the MCX three hundred blackout for like five bucks. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then if you want to like craft it, the good stuff, AP, you got to do this, like kill 40 Raiders on reserve task, which I'm just like, that's a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. and it's like, you take the 90 you buy from the trader and then you turn it into AP overnight. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's just too much grinding for me. So I was like, eh. and then the other interesting thing is like. CBJ has plus five recoil on the stat, whereas 300 Blackout AP only has plus three. Hmm. But it has slightly lower mus- bullet velocity, which I don't know if that actually matters. But you could just buy the SIG hybrid for 10, 10 USD, and it's double the price. And interestingly enough, it has plus 10 recoil, but like when I shot them, MCX. Blackout versus MCX Spear. The Spear felt better, and I don't know. I don't really know. What were the recoil numbers like? Because oh. the Spear's got really low recoil. Like, for for the caliber, or like, for the for the ammo that it fires, like the recoil isn't... It's not high, I would say. Like, the MCX is okay, but, you know, we've seen in the past that it doesn't get that many recoil-reducing attachments. Like, the Spear comes out of the box at, like, six... Something. I think. So this is this is my cook. It's fifty five on the spear. Fifty five. Uh, ergonomics. That's good. Oh, fifty five. Okay. Sixty two recoil. Sixty two solid in this patch. Yeah, I mean, you you could probably swap some parts around, but I want to keep the ergo around mm. there, right? Now. Yeah. <laughs> so my thought was like, can I get the MCX close to these stats, right? Because the other thing, the spear's more accurate. It's 1.43 MOA versus MCX is like 2, 
Uh, like mm -hmm. 2.79. That's with the long barrel as well. If you get the shorter <laughs> ones, even worse. So what I did was I put on similar S parts, but because the MCS can take the CQR, little like rounded, yeah. stick your thumb through it. I don't know. It's a, a grip, uh, right? Uh, a uh, handguard grip, whatever. You know what I'm talking about, chat. People. Poor grip. <laughs> yes. Poor grip. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's it's like one of those like unicorn ones, right? Like you can you can only put it on certain rails and it's certain very limited, yeah, yeah. But like it's technically pretty good. Like it's, it's basically in a RK one with an extra two recoil. Well, I guess I guess we're talking about the all right. So an RK, it's an extra. I'm sorry, I said three recoil. It's an extra three ergo compared to yeah. the RK one, right? So that's kind of nice. That is good. Yeah. But then it's like also, I could just use the SC5 and like trade one recoil for like four extra ergo, which mm -hmm. is kind of tempting. I don't I don't know how good it is. I mean like it's all it's because it's such a unicorn, I feel compelled to use it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it is technically better, but also I don't I'm not sure if it's actually worse. So I don't know. There's there's that kind of thing I'm tossing my mind. But this has got 52 uh, ergo and 61 recoil. So, like, one point less recoil than the spear. Like, three point less ergo. However, <laughs> the sacrifices had to be made, right? Oh, no. I am using 20 rounders. <laughs> because I thought, well, the spear has 25 rounders. This is, like, kind of close. And it gave me a bit more ergo to play with. So, I <laughs> And I mean, it's it's been working, you know. It's you know, it's it's budget spear, okay. You know, comp sacrifices have to be made, but I actually think it, it feels like it performs relatively similar. But I do feel, for whatever reason, the spear felt better. I don't, I don't know. It, I it's one of those things where like I would have to like do it side by side comparison. There was this was literally me playing customs, running around. Not finding yeah. the goons and then dying to a random PMC because I'm just running around being dumb. Yeah, the spear has incredible like horizontal control, even better than like, the MDR. I don't know what it looks like even on the stats, to be honest, because I've not, I haven't, I haven't even bothered looking it up. Like after they got rid of most of the stats or like the the relevance of the hidden stats, I, don't, I tend tend not to mm. really look at it anymore. But at least like it, it felt like it when I compared it to the. The MDR, like the black MDR. I'm actually just intrigued. Let me have a see if I can find find what this is. So the spear, the horizontal statistic is do 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 do. Where are we? Is ten. Whereas the MCX is this might be part of it. No, it's also ten. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't. But this is the thing. It doesn't seem to have much. Yeah, I looked at those hidden much, stats. Like, I, yeah. I couldn't make a head or tail of them. I thought about asking around, but I'm just kind of like, I don't really care anymore. Yeah, They all looked pretty, like, same, you know? <laughs> yeah, most of that's gone away. So I think that's, I think there are some things that are different about the different guns, mm -hmm. but yeah, the spear just feels, like, insane. It just feels like it shoots so straight. Like, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're talking about the different kinds of ammo, and it's like, yeah, you know, you, you could buy CBJ. Like, CBJ's good, don't get me wrong. Like, 58 damage, 43 pen. Like that's decent, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's half the price. But like seventy-two damage, forty-seven pen. It's just like the forty-three to forty-seven. It's like that's the difference between dealing with class five like easily and not. Yeah, yeah. You know, and going from fifty-eight damage to seventy-two damage is enough to change. You know, it makes the difference between if you hit a few stomach shots or arm shots, whatever. Like you know, it's got it, with arms like absorbing a lot of damage now quite annoying um i think like when i back in the day when i looked at cbj 58 damage with 43 pen I, I think that like goes under the threshold of two tapping somebody i think that's why cbj i never ended up basically being like it's like a bp on the cheap because you just can't do it like you need i think it's got the same i think it's got the same damage i think 58 damage is the same as bp but because the pen's 43 and not 47 the damage mitigation kicks in like much more strongly against class five and you still need to hit them three times. So it's like, okay, well, this is a three shot. The other one's a two shot. 
Um, like that, this is you know, this is not to say that CBJ is bad. I think the MCX with CBJ is actually really quite decent. Um, but the spear, I think, like, I, I, let's put it this way. I think at this point, I think it's quite clear that the spear is the best gun in the game. I think it's quite clear, in my opinion. Yeah, but it's just um, like it's just like way overpriced. <laughs> yeah, which is that fair? I don't know. Maybe I think I think it's okay. I don't, th- I don't think it's necessarily anything wrong with that per se. Like, it makes mm-hmm. it quite fun to find one. You know, we, we found a good balance here where it doesn't need to be banned from the flea because it it's so be expensive. Rare. It yeah. just needs to be rare. Right. And when you do go to the Mark Room and you get one, you go like, oh, holy crap, this thing's worth like 700k. Yeah, yeah. Because you can sell the gun for 500, the suppressor for, I don't know, 50, like, you know, the, the, the scope for 120. You're like, geez, this is like most of a million rubles just in this one weapon here that I can sell. Um, and if you want to use the best of the best of the best and try it out, then you can use it. Like I've been doing it, and it, was, and it feels fun, right? And sometimes you just get a headshot from wherever, or sometimes you just die because of a skill issue, and that's just where it goes. But <laughs> um, but if you want to use the best of the best, and again, we always complain about... Like, I always find I find the Tarkov community so funny about, yeah. like, oh, money's, like, meaningless, but the spear's way overpriced. Like, how can we both, how can we hold these? Like, I understand how we can hold both of these things at the same time. Sure. But like, a ULAC is overpriced, right? Like, you'll make more money if you don't run the ULAC. But your survival rate will go up. So that's what you're really paying for. Like, mm-hmm. the spear's way overpriced, but will your survival rate go up? I, th- I, think, <coughs> I think the difference with the spear, and this kind of like falls into some of the, we can kind of blend the two topics, right? Because I was going to talk about some endgame weapons, given we're talking about the spear anyway, as well as the MCX. I think the issue is, is that you can get like 95 or 97% of what the spear gives you by buying the black MDR. And it's like a fifth of the price or a quarter of the price or something. And I think that's probably yeah. where people are. It's like, yeah. is it really worth it for that right. like, the incrementally tighter spread, very slightly lower recoil, a little bit better weight and ergo? For like, you have to, you know, it's like Tarkov's like, you know, pretty exponential with some of these things. It's like four grip, you know, worth nothing, worth nothing, worth nothing, worth nothing. The third four grip, is worth twice what the trader pays for it for you on the flea. The third one is worth three times, and the mm-hmm. best in the game is worth like ten times. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with like contacts and headsets. Like all the headsets are worth just what the trader will pay for them, just what the trader will pay for them, just what the trader will pay for them. And then it's like, okay, swords are a bit more expensive. All right, XLs are like ninety k. Contact falls are three hundred thousand rubles. Like Tarkov's like <laughs> it's very exponential like that. So the the spear kind of follows that same pattern. It's like, I mean, you can't buy the MDR on the flea, so that's like one thing against it. Um, so I quite like that you can get it there, but it's expensive on the basis of like you can access it. But obviously you need the ammo from Peacekeeper. I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like it's justified because you can buy the ammo from the trader and you can buy the gun from the flea. It's like if you want to spend the money, you can do this. Yeah. If you're a Giga Chad and you've got all max traders, then like it doesn't matter. But people have always complained about like, oh, you know, put things back on the flea so that you know everybody can run it, blah, blah, blah. Like how many people at level 20? Or I mean, people who let's let's say how many people at Again, you do need the ammo, so that's probably why people wouldn't be able to do it. Because no, not much point running it with... Um, you need Peacekeeper 3, be. so like, well, um, that's like level 26 or something. You need Peacekeeper 4 for the good ammo, though. Yeah. But... That's, re- that's really the... Like, I, I don't know. I think it's hard to run without it. Um, I mean, it's basically like M80. No? FMJ? It's like, uh, it's it's like, like BCP 30... FMJ, oh, I think. is it? Okay. Yeah. On the lower um, 30s, a thousand, the higher 30s, like 37, 38. So I think maybe that's the problem. It's like, okay, you need the ammo to really run it, make most of it. By the time you've got Peacekeeper 4, then you've got access to the Black MDR anyway. And then it's like, well, it's not even like, you know, yeah. I get an extra 10 meters on my headset. It's like, it, the gun is like basically the same. Same mag size, still really good ergo. The recoil's really good as well. Same optics, you know, easier to mod. I think maybe that's where the issue is, but I don't know. The spirit, like the spirit rocks. Like don't get me wrong, the spirit rocks. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I've been I've been using the MCX too. I did I did a video about the MCX as well mm-hmm. recently, and it was uh, been yeah, it's been shredding. Like the one criticism that I keep getting of the MCX is like, oh, the horizontal recoil is like so bad in it though, and I'm just like it's not it's not true. That that used to be true, but it isn't true now. Yeah. Like, you go go and fire an M4. Really. Go and fire the MCX. Like it's the same. Like they they've been rebalanced yeah. out. I mean, the, the theme of this wipe is kind of like on most guns, minus like a few SMGs, um, or a lot of SMGs, I guess, is like not full autoing. <laughs> like, it feels full auto, feels pretty situational. 
yeah but i guess you at least have the option so yeah but um yeah and i like the, the m6 like it's it's good you just you can't go down to like super low recoil just because the parts aren't there that's still mm-hmm. the case but it doesn't really matter so much now right. i think like probably the biggest criticism of it and the reason why sometimes it ends up getting relegated into more of like a short and mid tier rather than a full generalist ar or assault rifle like some of the others like the m4 or whatever and the spear actually is that the ammo is like you I mentioned this before it's just not that fast like it's, yeah, it's, it's fast it's a, enough it's okay. okay like cbj is what seven two five meters per second like it's okay it's about the same as 762 by 39 yeah <laughs> but it's not that quick it's not like it's not really quick enough for like longer range head taps really and with the moa like you were saying that's if the, you other... go over to the spear mm-hmm. there's like a sick hybrid fires at 914 yeah that's quick yeah that's quick and that's like kind of on par it's like this is the thing for me the sick hybrid in the in the spear feels like firing 556 Yes, in, in a lot of ways, it yes. feels like you're firing five five six, but it's actually, you know, BP with <laughs> B- more damage yeah, in BP disguise. Plus. Yeah, yeah, it's BP plus in disguise. So it's like that's why it feels so good. Um, but the MDR is sort of similar, I suppose. But um, you know, even there, like Sig Hybrid is better than M six two, and Sig Hybrid is also not a tracer. So I feel like the the spear is just more general. But yeah, I think that's the only issue with the the MCX is that. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit like it's a bit a little bit slow. Um, it still has a bit of climb. Like the, you can't get the recall to zero. It's not like yeah. an SMG. But I feel like it fits like well into the meta now. I I need to kind of go back. I want to go back and like maybe do some more of the SMGs that I ran near the start of the wipe. I want to go back to like the MCX. Go back to the MP5 SD. Maybe upgrade some of the ammo to PVP and like see how those feel now because they do have like almost no recoil. <laughs> yeah, I did use the vector a bit with PVP. Um. Hmm. It was actually very good. The only problem was, is like <laughs> the gun. I was like, I didn't get any jams, but like after the raid, the gun was like below ninety percent. Like it's, yeah. it, it just fries the, the durability so easily. Um, no, I did feel like the um, the vector in particular had like too much horizontal for me. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, the the nine mil one, right? Yeah, yeah I mean. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's supreme in CQB. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely. <coughs> I don't know. I feel. I feel like it fits though. Like it's. It does. You're totally right. Valid, but like, it's not really designed past you know a certain distance. Like 100 meters is probably pushing it. You could probably do it with PB. Uh, the PB. Was it PBP? PBM? PP, yeah. PP. Yeah, you could probably do it there. Um, but you gotta like, you know, you can't you can't hold down mouse one all the time. Kind of is yeah. the thing. I suppose it. it's the same with like the others anyway, because if you want to run the really low recall versions of and or undo it easily, you need to run like the MP5 SD or the MPX SD. You could probably run like a you can run like a long rail MPX. You don't need to run like a um, mm-hmm. slow one but those ones in particular have like very slow muzzle velocity so you yeah. can't really use those at long range either you probably do have to build like a more like assault rifle version of the MCX sorry the MPX to make it work yeah. and, uh, like 9mm properly I would guess because uh, yeah the, the MP5 SD has got that like funny feature where it like vents gas and like makes supersonic rounds subsonic all the um, gun Jesus lovers out there Probably all watch that episode, but um, at the MPX, I think you can avoid that. But I, I don't know; it's still a slow bullet anyway. So, and the ballistic properties of that round is actually also quite bad. So they slow down, mm-hmm. quite, they slow down fast, and that's like one of the biggest enemies of it. It's like if you try and chuck that thing over 100 meters, it will be very slow by the time it gets there, no matter what you do, really. So yeah, I, I suppose there's that too. So it's like, well, you may as well then have the fire rate and the lethality up close from the vector. But like, when I used the vector, I literally just couldn't hit anything with it. So, like, I mean, maybe that's more of a speaks to more of a skill issue on my part than anything else. But like, I just find the MP5 SD something with a slightly lower fire rate that's not just quite so mm-hmm. um, a bit easier to control. But I'd be interested to go back to it and see, especially with trying to you know hit headshots, avoid plates. Especially now that people have better uh, armor, I feel like you're kind of almost more justified in 
going back and like testing it because previously it was good because AP six point three was getting through people's plates anyway and like the helmets and whatever. But like now it like might not. It's just like okay, can you still just hit faces and it be okay? I'm not sure. I think that's the advantage. Like I got a kill one guy that had a um, LZSH with the face shield. Mm. But it took two shots. <laughs> <laughs> like I shot him, he didn't die. I shoot him again. Um, but I think that's the advantage of because if it, if I was using AP six, like I don't know, that might be like five or six before I get through there. This helmet, at least, because it's class four. Oh, is it the four face as well? That one? He, he, no, but I shot him in the back of the head. Like he was oh, okay. Like yeah. he was kind of like clueless, probably because <laughs> he couldn't hear anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like he had, he had like a drum mag in his AK and two blue lasers on each side. Like he was kind of like, I don't know what this guy Keep doing, him. but yeah, I'll take the kill. <laughs> yeah. He kind of showed up in the middle of a fight and just kind of, yeah. Anyways, stumbled around with the predator lasers on. Yeah, he was like, "I'm going in," him. and he died. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, like that. I think that's the thing with AP six point three now. It's like it is a bit rough against mm -hmm. all the class four stuff and. Probably even with the tier three soft armor, like probably causes it some issues. Like it at will range, pen. Probably, but, yeah. Well, yeah, at range it'll start to not pen, and yeah. even close up, the damage mitigation. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where that will take it, but it'll definitely take it down to quite a lot. Like it'll cut a lot off um, at that point. I think. I wonder if I can just like do a very quick calc. This is like old armor system, but it's still like roughly roughly true. So yeah, like it does 52 damage, AP 6.3, but then it'll only do 37 once it goes through the soft armor. Which I suppose, like 37 times 3, it's still enough to kill somebody, mm -hmm. you know, in three shots, but not in two. So, I don't know. It's enough to kill somebody in the neck, as long as you're not too far away. Yeah, yeah. Um, One experience i've been having a lot that's i've seen uh other people share similar experiences but this is completely anecdotal no testing's been done but i don't know why but 762 bp slash pp does not feel good this swipe and i don't really know why especially bp um because pretty much like every night i do some type of like i mean nowadays pretty much every time i log on to i do some type of ammo craft so i've been stocking up a lot on like BP and stuff, and I've had like a few mutants, bought a few, a couple RDs, whatever, and it's just like the only thing that's like reliable is shooting in the head. Everything else just feels so bad, and I, I mean like this this build that I just pulled up here, it's got seventy eight recoil, which need I remind you the spear had sixty two, so like sixteen less. And it's like, that's the classic thing. It's like, the more you fall, like even scabs, I don't know why. They just like, sometimes it takes like four or five shots. And it's like, there's no way you're telling me that your freaking armor is like stopping my BP rounds. Like, it's just impossible. The one thing it could be is hitting arms, which I don't know if we, I don't think we talked about. Mm. No, um, not really. We did a bit, I think. I think we did a bit, because we talked a bit about M61 taking 13 shots to kill someone. Okay. Well, regardless, now arms is the best armor. You you hit them in the arms, the, the bullet can't pin through and hit the plates. They BSG the done that for a reason. That could be the case, but even then, I still feel like prior to that change, I was still having issues with BP or PP, probably more PP um, oriented, but then again... Back then, that was probably the days where plates, if it stopped the plate, they took zero damage. So who knows? But I swear there's something weird going on with 762 BP, PP. I don't know. It's just the only thing that works is head. Everything else just feels like they just eat. And I don't understand why. It could be a recoil thing. Like if you, you know, you shoot a scav and it's, you think, oh, I'll just like burst fire and it'll die and he doesn't die and he try it again and you know maybe a couple of those hit his arms or miss or whatever uh, maybe i don't know but it's just I, I i i use it every time and every time it always disappoints me i i don't know i got so much of it i might as well do it <laughs> yeah i've been using 762 by 39 like basically all week mm -hmm. which is has been kind of interesting um 
for me, it has worked honestly about as I would expect. It's felt fine. Um, I had a really, really good time with the RPD. <laughs> like a really good time, like a, an offensively good time. It was, <laughs> it was insanely good. Like I killed a duo around check 15 kind of courtyardy kind of area, like outside that kind of bit with the RPD. Cleaned up those guys, went over to try and do, I can't remember like why I ended up going in there. Oh yeah, it's because I, I went from there across the road, like through the back of the Klimov Trading Center and then ran into um, Colin Ty and all of his boys. I had a, a long fight with them, killed all of them with the RPD as well. And then like dragged like 72 kilos out of the raid, <laughs> which is insane. I had like a really good time. I had like a couple of good raids. I ended up getting killed by a uh, meta Chad Sweatlord around check 15 again. Uh, I got myself trapped in a stairwell and I had, a, I had an L can on the RPD N and uh, we were fighting it about five meters away and he had an MDR with a hollow on it. And I, yeah, I just instantly got just dragged there, which was a, it was a shame. But I, I personally think that what we're experiencing collectively is the discrepancy and the, the difference between how good they were before and how yeah. they've been changed in the recall system now. For sure. I haven't, in fairness, I haven't used BP. I've only used PP. I actually have some BP, but I never really felt like I needed it. Um, I was doing like, I was doing like scav kills and stuff. I was killing like a lot of scavs for some reason. I can't remember why. And um, I was like, oh, I don't really need to. But, but PP has also just been nailing people for some reason. But that said, it's almost like, it's almost weird that 762 and BP in particular, was in such a specific sweet spot of being good for this reason, that reason, the other reason, right? Like, typically the guns in that caliber had like really good convergence stats back when those, when that stat mattered. That was also, yeah. like the Mutant yeah. had two, for example, for the longest time until it eventually got nerfed. The RDs was never that high, but it had really low fire rate. So all of them have low fire rate. The RDs 600. Is, and was RD six, was, was like six, very was, yeah, vertical. Is 600, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Ardy was very vertical, other... like almost no horizontal recoil. The yeah, mutant right. had extremely high convergence, so it had like basically no pull up um, and fired faster as well at like mm -hmm. 650. Just like the whole thing felt really good. Like the, the seven, like 762 BP in a mutant used to perform or used to outperform like PST in an MCX or an MP5 SD. It was insane at one point. But then things slowly got changed, right? They changed the horizontal recoil thing. Then with this wipe, they got rid of all of that stuff. And what's happened, like you've seen a big shift in the guns that are good. And that's partly because we've reversed the bias towards low fire rate weapons that came in 1212. Yeah. Because yeah, all it affects right. now is the speed at which the weapon climbs. It doesn't actually affect like the height of the, the peak. It doesn't affect the, you know, the, the whiz up and whiz back down again. It's like, Two guns with the same recoil will typically get to the same full auto spray point. Because one of them gets there quicker if it's got a higher RPM. It's a lot easier to control. It's very consistent and it's much more straightforward than it was. That combined with the, the plates thing mm. means that you don't need 762 BP to be able to kill somebody. It's not necessary. And so I feel like those guns were in a very particular sweet spot of being good because of low RPMs, because of good hidden stats, because of the ammo. And all of those things have just been thrown out of whack and now they just feel very, very normal. They feel very average. I don't, feel, yeah. I don't think they're necessarily terrible. I just think they're like kind of in line slash maybe even slightly worse because it's yeah. like, well, I could get faster fire rate and fire five, five, six and they'll die in two shots if I don't hit them in the plate anyway. Or I just go the whole, whole hog and go 762 by 51 NATO and kill them with high damage. Um, obviously, I'd have to take some downsides, but now I can get a 25 round mag in these babies. Like, I'm not limited, you know? That was kind of why 760 by 39 sat in the middle, because it's like, okay, I can have a higher performing cartridge, but I can stick it in a 50 rounder. Well, now the MDR can get a 25 round mag. Like, you're bordering on regular mm -hmm, assault mm -hmm. rifle, like default mag territory. And so yeah. it's sort of like been edged out both ways. Like, the, the regular assault rifles and the intermediate cartridges, the lighter intermediate cartridges, like, have pushed in on their territory because they can kill in two shots, three shots anyway, even if you're using like SOST because of soft armor and so it's not necessary to have a pen of 47 whereas the higher powered ones have more damage than 762 by 39 and the pen to deal with plates as well 
and now bigger magazines. So it's like, I feel like both ends of the spectrum have just compressed them down into the middle. So it's, it's, really, it's really interesting how this ended up like panning out. I just really like the RPD is still really a lot of fun. I honestly think it's like a great gun. A hundred bullets in there is just hilarious. Not having to reload is great. Like fighting Kolontai and knowing that you don't have to reload against like five pushing, you know, AI bots is like mm-hmm. actually insanely good. It's insanely fun. And you can like push on people and run around and spray, pre fire them, whatever. Like you can you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with a hundred rounder that you can't with with other guns. And you're kind of because you're sort of forced to do it on the RPD, you don't feel like you're losing anything like you do with the others. I know that's probably a psychological thing, right? Mm-hmm. You could put a hundred rounder on the MCX and do just the same thing. It would feel like ass. Whereas mm-hmm. on the RPD, you're like, well, this is just what the RPD is like. Yeah. And it has a higher RPM as well, which is good. Um, the, the other like standout one, I think, is the SKS. Like that thing has just been like irrationally oh, yeah. buffed. I need to I've use not used it more. yet. Mm, I need to use it as well. But like the UAS, uh, I think the UAS model of the stock, I think, is like insane. I think it's like super low recoil yeah. and acts like, you know, a top tier DMR. Uh, for whatever reason. I think that thing's quite good. Like, I've seen lots of people talking about it. I've not used it myself, really. I'm not a big semi-auto guy, so I don't know. But um, I, like, I'm tempted to... I'm sort of... I want to try and use one of the AKM th- with the 308 adapter, like, regular AKs. I just uh, try that as well, but I don't know. Like, I, I, I use the Mutant. I use... Really, I use the Mutant. I use the RD. I still much prefer the RD. Like, the Ergo is just so much better. The Mutant just felt kind of like... Just felt... Yeah, it just felt a bit compromised no matter what I did. Like, Put the suppressor on. Well, now you can't mm-hmm. really have a scope. Like it can't run the fifty rounders. Yeah. So you either have to run the forties or the like the big box, which is like terrible ergo. So I ended up running it with the forties, but it's like it felt okay. I don't know. I, I preferred the RD because it was much more. Uh, it was much more forgiving in terms of ergonomics. So I could suppress it and put an LPV on it and put a fifty round drum on it, and it was uh, actually okay. So like I still quite like the RD as far as the guns. From the past go yeah the mutant just felt kind of kind of rubbish i think but yeah it's interesting interesting yeah um i think <laughs> they need to do like a i can yeah slap them together just 59 76 like is that any better than an rd ah uh, this is the problem right it's the 76 i think that's the killer like the base right. recoil on these things just like you can't get them can't get them low enough to where they feel like you'd rather use them over something else. I think that's mainly the problem. I mean, you could swap this part out, maybe you get 5375. That's still even then. Yeah. Suppressed. Uh, let's see. What's what's the what's the RD at? Silence. So we got 5375. This is 6271 with a scope and flashlights. Yeah, so, so it'd probably be a bit less with like a bigger mag, but yeah. I mean, the th- because they are, are they, sorry, the RD704 has got slightly lower RPM, you can kind of get away with the 30s. Like using a 30 on the RD, if you fire at the same time as an M4 with a 40 rounder, you will finish your mags at the same time. So it feels slightly more, like, I know your, your DPS is probably lower, right? But like, it feels slightly more forgiving having a smaller mag on the RD just because the fire rate is lower. So like, yeah, mm. sometimes you'll just get outshot because of that. But like, at least you don't run out of ammo as quickly as using a 30 rounder with like the MCX, for example, which does kind of feel like you need to use a 40, at least, I think anyway. Have you, have you been using the 30s? MCX? Yeah. I use the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Because I mean, it's only like, I mean, yeah, it's 25% less than... A twenty-five rounder, but the ergo bonus. I'm saying the one thing that really grinds my gears. I wish it had a, a like it doesn't have any perks to packing it. Unfortunately, oh, that's a shame. yeah. But the it does have. It only takes up one slot, so you can mm, so te- have loads of them. Yeah, so you could have. You know, you know. Normally, think about this, right? The spear it takes up two slots for twenty-five rounds. Whereas this one takes up one slot for 20. So technically, I have t- <laughs> my mag is technically 40 in storage <laughs> in theory. Yeah, it's got a high density, I guess. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could maybe use that with like the fast reload. I'm not sure if that is better on the, MD- on the MCX than it is on other, other guns. I don't know if it's much quicker, but um, you could almost like justify it with the 20s, you know? 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it seems fine. Like, hasn't really been that too much of an issue. Um, just bring probably like at least five plus one in the gun, six total. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, no, it's, it's it's interesting. I do think, yeah, I do think the MDR probably it's like it's the gun of the moment. I think I I I honestly don't get on with that kind of weapon all that well. Like I'd rather have like slightly lower recoil most of the time. Like mm. I'm not really a big Chad with those kinds of guns, but it's it's the community's favorite right now for sure. I can see why as well. Yeah. Kind of got everything that you need. Like it, I mean to be honest, it was it's been a favorite for a long time. You know, this was, yeah. it was also yeah. good before. And it's partly because it's so easy, you know, ergo as you go up the caliber power ranking typically the ergonomics gets worse on these things like the guns get heavier it's harder to like you know get the ergo up there but because the mdr just gets it straight away it's like okay all you have to worry about is recall oh well that's also quite good okay fine so now i just need to put on like it takes like no modding it's like easy for people to do yeah start uh, sorry foregrip scope and muzzle break that's yeah. it and just and then I pack some ammo in maybe a laser flashlight off you go nice and straightforward so it's also got that bonus as well of like re-gear, you know, e- ease of access, which people do enjoy. So yeah, I can I can see where people like it. Um, I think like I don't hit enough for twenty five. Like twenty five still feels like slightly tight. I quite like. I'd, I that's why I'd pick the MCX personally with with a forty in it at least because mm-hmm. I get like more chances. Or like if I'm against two people, I find it quite hard as a solo to get use that twenty five effectively. You know, just because like I'm not hitting headshots with every bullet, so. I need some more chances. So it's kind of each their own. But yeah, it's definitely the, the Chad choice right now. Well, it's kind of similar to like the RD, right? You get, you get 100 rounds. You know you can play with that to your advantage. So you just mm. have to adapt to... I only have 20 or 25 rounds. So you have to play a lot more pick off A lot more yeah. ratty, you know? Poke them, poke them from the side. You can't just bust through the front door with the drum mag. Yeah. I, did, I did use it. What's <laughs> and I use US ammo again, and I actually really like the RD with US ammo. It's also funny because it takes longer to kill them, so that makes it even more comical. It like kind of yes. adds to it, but it makes the it makes it full autoing a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, because one thing I didn't realize both PP and BP increase recoil by the ammo. Mm, so the swing is like quite wide. I see. Uh, Plus five for PP. I think it's plus seven for BP, which was not something that's on my radar. So there's also that that's adding to it. Um, whereas US, I think it's like minus, minus 30. 30. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a swing of like 35, like at, at best, if you're using going from PP, which is huge, right? And yeah. like, as we said before, it's like, is it, a, is it a percentage? Is it a full number? Like nobody really knows. You know, it's kind of a blend of the two. But at those recoil levels, you can probably think about it as, a flat number, roughly. Um, but that's it's probably okay up at like the eighties to just say okay, it probably is about fifty. So it, it probably feels worse than the org, but better than like a mid tier M4, I would guess. Um, I'd need to test it and have a look at it, but um, especially with the new system, like yeah, you know, I really don't know how that would impact it and what that number means realistically. Needless to say, it's going to be better. I've used a bit of US myself, and it's you know, the US isn't that bad especially in the context uh, of the armor system because it's 29 pen that's true you know at least it's going to go through the soft armor it's not like it's just not going to do that but like yeah class four helmets may be a problem yeah. class four plates and above obviously is going to be an issue but uh you know it still does decent damage like 56 i, th- I think the issue is at is that point it's like 56 damage and 29 pen i'm like yeah then i get to use the rd and then i get to put it in the thing and it's like Sure, but like <laughs> if I scroll down the ammo chart, right, I come to something like uh, L191 in the P90, yeah. which is 53 damage and 33 pen. Mm-hmm. And so the damage on US probably needs to go up a bit, I think, before it's like really good because I can get that 30% recoil reduction naturally just by choosing a different weapon. Right. I don't, right. I don't have the weird drop off problems. But Giga, um, you lose the hundred round drum mag. Oh, for yeah, for the RPD, yeah, of course, you lose the hundred round for the RPD. That's that's definitely true. You could put a fifty. You could put a fifty on, like, oh, I guess the P ninety is fifty to start with, and then and then you get higher RPM as well, which is yeah. kind of what you want this wipe. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. 
I, want, I think US probably flies quite well, bizarrely, out, outside of the drop problems. It actually probably doesn't lose that much damage in Penovo. Well, I think it's you're never, you're never going to hit. It is, yeah. You're never going to hit because of the yeah. drop problems. But as in, like, because it's subsonic, the way that the algorithm works, because it's already slow, it can't get that much slower. Mm -hmm. And the damage in pen is tied to the speed reduction. And so it ends up probably not losing much damage in pen over distance compared to supersonic rounds, oddly. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's funny. Mm. Once, they, once they get in bipods working, if that's a reality... Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna. I've probably said it before. That's the first thing I'm doing is going grabbing the RD, maybe the G36 with the bipod as well. But I'm gonna set up somewhere, set up my little camping spot, and just I just want to mow someone down. Like bonus points if I can put tracers in in the gun because I just want to like the T45 M is coming for you. Strike the fear of machine gun automatic fire at them, you know, and just. Damage by a thousand or death by a thousand cuts. Yeah, you can do proper like stormtrooper RP with, <laughs> with that one because yeah. T45M is red tracer as well. So, but seriously, if they get a system like that in, you could really like do like how oh, man, it'd be so cool. You could do like some real tactical stuff. Be like, I need suppressing fire and Concordia. I'm like I'm on <laughs> it. I'm setting up. <laughs> you just get, 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 you know. Be fun. That would be good. Can you imagine to be in there though as well? And it's just like all the windows smashing and stuff. Like, oh god. Shoot for twenty seconds, get one tapped by another <laughs> different player. <laughs> yeah. One weird thing to mention about the RPD, given that I've been running it like a little bit, and I do like that gun a lot, is that the reload animation is like obnoxiously long. Yeah. As I'm sure you're aware. And so we were like figuring out with chat, like what is the most what's like the meta way to fix that and basically you can bring like obviously you could bring a pistol or something or, or but the i think the lightest like secondary is one of the is the one of the bayonets and so you just swap to the bayonet and then you just like right click reload and do it in the inventory and then you just get instant rd reload and then you just swap back it's much faster than doing the actual reload animation so you need to have something with you. i didn't take anything with me and i was not taking my melee to save on weight um but yeah for having the bayonet is probably the lightest way if you don't want to take a pistol then you could just do that and then you can like swap over and just quick swap it over and then swap it back. I think it's actually like, I think that's meta to have another gun or another thing to swap to when you're using the RPD. I think it's kind of necessary because yeah, the reload animation is insane. You're actually probably even better off just doing it in combat, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> yeah, no, like it's uh, just, it's so long, the, the reload yeah. animation. It is so long. So uh, yeah, it's just a little tidbit. If you think of using it, then equip a knife or a pistol or something and just swap to that when you try to reload and just do it in the inventory. Just right-click reload on the RPD. Also, another annoying thing about it is that because it's like a drum and you don't have any other alternatives, <clears throat> if you are reloading it just using the inventory, then like you can actually get away with not having a drum mag like slot. You don't need a 2x2. Two two. But mm -hmm. if you do want to be able to reload it while you're running and not have to use the inventory sometimes, you have to bring like two two by right. two rig otherwise right. it doesn't work and the only one that you can use if you don't want to use a piece of armor is the um the load bearing mm -hmm. rig the expensive like chad meta one the three by three that like puts loads of stuff inside because if you don't do that you have to choose something like the avs or well, actually i don't think even the avs does the avs have that yeah the, the, two. Like the, yep. and the tv 110 and things like that yeah um i think the avs is probably the best of those like the TV-110 obviously doesn't... No, it only protects around the plate with soft armor, and it's, um, yeah, it's just kind of problematic. But, uh, yeah, it's, like, annoying. If you want to, like, use an actual piece of armor, like, I pretty much use... I just sort of go between the Thor and the Defender and the Osprey. It's, like, um, with the Thor and the Defender, I have to use the load-bearing or whatever. Yeah, Bagari's another option as well. Bagari you can do as well. But, um, you know, it's, like, no neck on it, super heavy, Russian plate. Like, eh, I don't know. Like it's, it's okay. I don't really use the Vagari very much, but yeah, you can. You could do. But you're a little limited. I think you're better off just like ignoring like just de just unbind the reload button when you have the <laughs> RD when you have the um, RPD equipped and just like make sure you use the inventory. Because yeah, it's funny because when I was doing it the first time, I was like, oh, I can't be bothered. I'm just gonna I'm just playing like fast and loose with this thing. And you can just like right click reload in the inventory, and if it's in your bag, it'll do it in the bag and put the old mag in the bag. 
which mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I talked about this last time, but I was like, I was surprised that that actually yeah. worked like that. I thought it was going to drop it on the floor, but if you're in the inventory, it doesn't do that. It puts it in your backpack. So, it's kind of weird. But... Yeah, it's kind of weird, but like it does make it a lot easier to use. But um, yeah, I don't know. Overall, like I, I heard lots of things about seven six two by thirty nine as well. But I, I actually think it's like I think it's fine. I've not used BP that much, but I think yeah, people are just like used to the way it was, and like the relative mm-hmm. power change is like quite extreme, and so people are just kind of reacting to that. But right. uh, no, like it's still usable, I think. Pro pro tip: even lighter. You don't need a melee. You don't need a pistol. Here's what you do: press tab, drag gun into sling, change the slot, and then. Right click, install, change it back, and then untab, you're good to go. And your character literally puts the gun away, and I guess he has his hands out. And mm. then you menu reload and you pull it back out. That's a that's, good point. Yes, you can I, do that. That's what I do. I've still you know, stole that from Sheev. I've seen him do it all the time with various guns, RD especially. Pretty mm. uh one of those classic Tarkov weird mechanics that's in the game. <laughs> Don't know. Weird trick streamer found. Nikita hates him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Should we jump? You want to talk to Money in the Hideout? Which, what's Money in the Hideout? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the Hideout and Money. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that one. So, uh, uh, Bitcoins. <laughs> Bitcoins are worth 16,000 million trillion rubles each. Now, it's like, this is like Bitcoin, Bitcoin wipe number two. Uh, Basically, because like IRL mm-hmm. Bitcoin, it is still linked. People do still ask that question. I think most people are aware, but um, it is still linked to the IRL price of Bitcoin. Real life Bitcoin is now at sixty-seven thousand seven hundred dollars per coin. Um, off the highs actually, been been higher in, in recent days. I think it got up to seventy-three k something something around that. Anyway, so they're still linked, and so the IRL Tarkov, well, so the price in Tarkov goes up and down based on the the in game and it's like basically just linear but they, they depicted it in the past because of prior you know rips in the asset it went down and has come back up and is like overshot and come you know higher than it ever did before which is why now bitcoins are worth nine hundred and eleven thousand rubles a therapist which is crazy so anybody who has um i actually think even oh yeah yeah 9 11 according to this i think mm, is that true yeah i think that's i think that's right anyway it's about 900k so I went from having 25 GPUs in the Bitcoin farm. Mm-hmm. Wasn't sure if I was going to be able to ever like get the lab's items to do the thing, to get solo or whatever. Because you need solar power right. to get Bitcoin level three to getting it and then being like, oh, damn, okay. Like I had tentatively bought like one or two GPUs. Like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, as I get extra money, I'll do it. And then in the end, I was just like, okay, Bitcoin's just worth so much. Like, I shouldn't just like be messing around here. So I ended up just spending like all my cash on Bitcoins. Basically, I, w- I went down to like six mil. Um, yeah, that was like also twenty out- something. Yeah, I had, I had loads. Yeah, and then uh, and then I went down to six mil partly because like chat was just like, oh, you should just buy a yellow key card. And I just like went to the tab tab because I was trying to find the items. And I was, they were like, oh yeah, you know, it's like eleven mil, twelve mil. Whatever. I was just like, whoop, and I just bought one. And everyone was like. <gasps> he literally just bought one like just like that. I was like, eh, man, whatever. So I did that, <laughs> and then I bought like twenty GPUs off the fleet. And I was still obviously making money on, along this time, so I ended up on like six million. And I was like, okay, like if I'm gonna utilize this thing, I may as well just buy all all of them now because the sooner I buy it, the sooner it pays itself off. So from there, I was like, right now we've got to be on the grind. Now that we've got to be you know, get back up the money. You could easily have like two or three bad days on streets and like be off, like be like seriously low at this stage. I was like, right, the grind commences. And I had like a really good um, dream, especially on Tuesday, which is the Colin Ty one. But I've been like, you know, doing a bit of scav here and there, like crafting stuff, selling things, whatever. And I'm back to like 33 million or something, which is like just crazy, actually. I was like, what? Um, so like I'm, I'm thinking of actually putting together a how I make my money video. Because people ask me all the time and I'm like, yeah, this and that. I craft and I do hide out and run through scav and like playing raids and grabbing items. But I've never really like documented it. And I think it would be interesting to do. I'm probably going to do this next week, like a week of like. How much money can I make if I'm like actually trying, you know, thinking about it, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not going to go down to like the excruciating detail, but it's going to be like. I did a crafting session 
and here was before and here was after. These are the kind of the crafts that I was Crafting doing. session. <laughs> yeah, you know, like you log in, you've got like a notification, it's eight notifications. So I go mm. through, right, water filter, workbench, da da da, replace this, replace that, replace the other, da 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 da. Okay, fine. That's before and after, fine. And then it's like, okay, I did a scav through factory and I got these things, I sold them, fine. And I did another one, another one. And then I did my stream on X day and then we got this stuff and I either went up or down. And just like to break it down into like each category and be like, okay, where did the money actually come from? And then the Bitcoin farm, I have separate. So like that's its own money. Um, and I think they'll just be really useful for people to understand where it comes from because like people ask, and it, and it showed, the reason why I wanted to do this was literally because of like going down to 6 million and then working my way from 6 million all the way back to like 30 something, like relatively easily and it's like i kind of know how i did it but it it's some combination of lots of different things and we had like a relatively mm, sort of a, we had a relatively large debate yesterday mm-hmm. in chat about whether the hideout's worth it like whether it makes enough money like the classic of oh i could just go and do a scav raid and i'm like no but it it's running while you do the scav raid man like right. people, and i'm like and they're like well what crafts are you doing then and like we had these kind of like well i'm doing the pile of meds one well that's 20k it's just like 20k oh like, well, you know who cares like who cares about 20k yeah and i'm like yeah but it's like 20k here and there and there and there and then it takes you like three minutes to run through the whole hideout you know and like, you don't even need to sell it straight away you could just sell it later when you've got like four or five sets of crafts like running and like pick the optimal time so like i kind of wanted to, i sort of wanted to push back against that as well and that it's not even to say that if you don't want to use the hideout and you don't need the money i'm not saying that you should use it because if you don't need to like why bother and some people were saying that to be fair it's like well i sell my one bitcoin every like you know 16 hours and like that's the way enough money for me and it's like fine well then don't don't waste your time like you're actually wasting your time then otherwise you're just gonna end up with 70 mil at the end of the wipe like why yeah so so you know if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. But to say that it's not worth it economically, that you won't make money right, from it like right. enough, I just think is I just think it's wrong. I think that's like yeah. I don't think that's right. Yeah. Um, and so it's not, it's your choice whether to, to participate in that or not. Mm-hmm. But I just don't think it's correct to say that. So it was like partly that and partly the fact that I was like, okay, like this has been pretty successful doing the thing. Um, so I'm probably going to do that. And it's yeah, it's quite interesting. So like Bitcoin's obviously makes everything expensive, which is also kind of interesting on its own basis. Like it actually ends up making the stuff that you sell more expensive because people are willing to pay more for them because <laughs> they're paying for it with Bitcoins. So everything gets more expensive. So yeah, Bitcoin going up means yeah. that you sell your loot items right. more. Which is quite a funny one. And um, I guess the other part of it has been, I've been like toying, because oh, I've been playing lots of streets still. I've, I actually died a lot yesterday uh, for various reasons. I was trying to go to check 15. I had some really unfortunate ones. I had a silent scab nade kill me. I had like Mega Chad kill me when I had my RPD. I had a guy who killed me just because I happened to turn up at Pinewood while he was looking at one of the windows and I died there. Like I just, I died a lot. But one thing that I've been experimenting with is like just looting more on streets, like going to more of the rooms, doing more of the stuff, mm-hmm. going to the actual places and finding the things and, uh, and then using the BTR. So even though I wow. died loads, like I got like three sets of BTR stuff with like, you know, two lions and the, you know, the golden eggs and rollers and all this stuff. So like I died, but then I'm just like, get back to my hideout. And then one hour later, it's just like, here's like 300 K's <laughs> worth of items. Kind of like a secure container <laughs> that you pay for in the raid. Basically. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Which is interesting. I'm like one of the times it was arguable that like me going for the BTR is what got me killed in the first place. Right. I died right. to like, uh, in that one, I died to a like, heroic headshot through mm. the like third story window ab- of the apartments above the small shop that's kind of like near the uh, you know the crashed train exfil it's near relaxation room um it's like in that bit and there's like near the end of the street it's like yeah the opposite side of the street to the cinema yeah um and yeah there's that, the apartment building and i was like i i, I it was just the weirdest fight like i saw somebody mm. i shot at them i ran into the building healed up because i got hit crept into the shop was like looking for the guy looking for the guy could hear one guy over the road and one guy to the right and i was like okay looking 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 Mm, nobody there so i'm gonna go get some more information from upstairs literally the moment i turn around to like go back into the apartment kind of building i just get like lit up and i was like what like there was nobody like i didn't think there was anybody near me like what the hell like i could still hear sounds from the right so like i didn't think anyone was creep walking up he wasn't silent or anything i was like this is just super weird so like i was survived so i like ran upstairs 
I'm like clomping around upstairs, like starting to peek through the windows. Like maybe the other guy's like looking out of one of the upper floor windows in this like kind of like ornate sort of like ballroom kind of thing that looks out over relaxation room. Yeah. And I was like, maybe he's looking through the windows. So I'm like, you know, like each time I'm going forward slightly more and slightly more like, yeah, okay, second story, first floor, like down onto the, the start to go down onto the street. I like peek over for the last time and like one of the players, well, I thought it was a player's gap actually, but this guy was a real PMC. So maybe it was just really unlucky. And I like look over and like the moment I see him, Bam! I just get headshot instantaneously through the window. I was just like, okay. And everyone was just like, sus, 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 sus. And like, I, as is my new Did policy, I didn't even look at the stats. So I managed to, um, managed to knock my headset out again, which is really annoying. I, I, I keep using my hands too, too vigorously and knocking my headset out, which is really, really annoying. But um, yeah, so I, I didn't, even, didn't even look at his stats because it's just like, who cares, right? If he's cheating, he's cheating. Mm. If not, whatever. Like, I died anyway. It doesn't, doesn't matter. But um, I think they may have seen me because I went to the BTR before to deposit all my crap. And people were like, well, you kind of did go to the BTR. Like, it's a pretty obvious mm-hmm, mm-hmm. place to be. So, like, you know, did I die because of the BTR? Like, I don't know. But it's very tempting because every, every time you get away with it, like, you deposit a bunch of stuff in there and then you go back and you loot the extra things and you right. go out with a full bag as well. Right, right. So I you kind of amplify in... your loot a lot. Yeah. The only problem I have is <laughs> I don't understand the logic. I've only seen, like, you know, clips of videos mm. of it shooting and people complaining why it's shooting at me. It's that, unfortunately, it's made me completely avoid it, like the plague, because I don't... Yeah. Like, I, I think that's one thing I don't like about it, is I... Man, you know, we probably mentioned this before, but I'll just say it again, just say it again, is I wish it would, like, indicate that it's aggroed, whether it's, like, pissed off at you, or whether someone paid for it. I mean, I don't know, maybe that wouldn't... I don't know. It's just... I There's wish just it did. something I wish it had, there like, that's like searchlight or something. I wish it. Yeah, did. it's yeah. just like I don't. I don't like the fact that <laughs> that sounds really cool, but like most of the time, it's like, am I really gonna run over there to like dump and risk everything in my backpack to dump yeah. some items? Like it just, uh, you know what I mean? And it's not. Yeah, like, a, it's not like a feel good experience. Like you die in like one to two shots. It's like hundred percent, hundred percent. They did the BTR is now fixed with fourteen point one. Okay. So the behavior of the BTR is was updated mm-hmm. with the reinstating of the patch that got rolled back. I've not been shot at it yet, and I've been in it four times. Okay. So I'm I'm quietly optimistic. I'll give it a shot next time. Yeah, like <laughs> it feels better. Like you can still get killed i think coming out of it or whatever like just because somebody like camps you because if they see you go in it's like well he's got to be coming out unless you right. decide to travel somewhere um i didn't so again this is another thing where i was probably slightly too risky i didn't travel anywhere in the btr i just deposited the stuff and got straight back out because i had more stuff to loot in that area you know um so you could just like get in move like pay for covering fire as well which i, mm-hmm. I didn't do because i didn't bring enough money so i couldn't pay for it i bought 100k and I spent too much money transferring loot items and then couldn't pay for covering fire. So you got to bring like quite a lot. You got to bring like 150k or something. I've learned this. I've learned this lesson. Um, but yeah, no, it's interesting. It's interesting. So like, yeah, I want to document it and see. Because like, I do think that, yeah, even just monetarily, it's worth it. Somebody in chat pointed out that the bonuses alone are worth it. You know, you get bonuses from library, from the shooting range, from the oh, right, right. air filter, yeah, like all that yeah. kind of stuff. Obviously, the yeah. gym. I think the gym, because the gym got buffed, I think. And now that endurance and strength are like nerfed this wipe in particular, it's. Yeah. yeah I think it's like a, as a relative percentage of your overall level, I think the gym has now become more like higher. Because the gym now, the debuff recycles faster. So you can do it like more. Um, I think you can do it at least may, maybe two times per day if you do like one in the morning, one in the evening, maybe. Um, some, something like that. Like it's, it's not like 24 hours, it's shorter than that now. So I don't know. There's lots of stuff to the hideout, um, but like you know, de- definitely like the workbench. Like certain modules are better than others, but like the workbench for many crafts, the med station for piles of meds, and then the lavatory for making fabrics. I think at least those and the and the scav case too. At least those things kind of uh, kind of make sense. Um, scav case probably less so if you actually. We had another conversation about the scav case about how it was like unprofitable, and I said, oh, I think yeah, I think it's definitely profitable. Um, but what people actually meant was once you take into account the amount that it costs to make it, the amount that you have to make back is like actually really high. Like it's expensive, yeah, it's an expensive yeah. module. You don't make enough. Like it's not it's not enough to just be making a bit extra each time. Um, I think like ninety five k is sort of agreed on as like was maybe the best one. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes you get a crazy payout, but it's like 
you don't lose that much when it's not that good. Mm-hmm. I've been like experimenting with two and a half K because you basically like on a money in like on a return on investment basis, not necessarily an absolute basis, but on a return, like on a percentage basis, you definitely get out more than you put in like almost every time. Like you only need like one bolt and you 10x what you put in. So yeah. that one definitely mm. does make money. I think 95K might make more from a, on, a, on an absolute basis. Right, um, right. But obviously like per run, it's like less on, on a percentage. So. so I don't know. But um, yeah, I don't know whether that one's necessarily like worth, worth. But you know, there's like, uh, there's, there's, there's good things to do in there. There's little, you know, optimizations, whatever. Like I think like crafting Moonshine actually is also really good now. Like Moonshine often is up to nearly like 400K. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah, I've never seen moonshine this expensive. Like you said, the, the Bitcoin being at what it is really does inflate the economy. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, that's that. That's the plan. Um, oh, Bitcoin barter is basically profitable every time. Yeah, which is yeah. kind of interesting. As a scary um, barter to sit. Yeah, uh, like Tetris's and green batteries are like two hundred k. So if you pick it right, then mm-hmm. you can get it for like 800 and then sell it for 9, 10 to mechanic. Like it's one, I had a couple of green batteries that, well, I had one in particular that I ended up in, I had it in my skewer and I came out and was like, oh, well, it's non-finding rage. But then I could buy one more and then yep. two of the other thing and monetize it like <laughs> that. So it's like effectively get the finding raid value right. out of it. Yeah, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> yes. It's like those things are really valuable for the secure container for that reason. Like yeah. You've talked about it before. It's like another kind of like laundering of non finding raid items to still get the because you can do a bar or something or a craft or whatever so i had a tetris like that but i honestly just fendered it because i just couldn't be bothered to set it up <laughs> I just yeah be bothered <laughs> well the funny thing is they changed the bitcoin barter so that you seem to always be able to access it now like you can do one oh, it's like they? not like perma sold out yeah because i never used to bother oh, wow. yeah people used that's because people were saying to me they were like oh you know you're, you're missing out like why are you selling these things on the fleet you should be doing the bitcoin barter. i'm just like man it's like never in stock but like something changed a little bit ago where it's like it's in stock always, I think. Um, maybe it does sell out sometimes, huh. but it seems pretty much always in stock. Yeah. Yeah, stocking issues are like mostly gone, I would say. The main one for me was like PS12B. Yeah, SPP. a lot of the prepper four yeah. ammos, there's three of them, SPP, uh, BT, BT, and then mm-hmm. PS12B. Yeah, those are yeah. like always out of stock. Even yeah, FMJ like- for the... And P7, I've seen yes, stock a few times. that's true. And I've seen M62 out of stock on Peacekeeper as well. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. Sometimes. But that normally happens later on in his reset. Like, I, I did go to... I set a couple of alarms for Prapor just to, just to try it. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't sell out, like, instantly. But, you know, like, 20 minutes later, like, it's gone. Yeah. And in that case, it's like, well, with a three-hour cooldown... You're, it's a long It's just time. not very likely, yeah. right? It's just... You're just less... You're not that likely to bump into him when he's... Uh, yeah. When he's resetting houses, like it's just the way it is. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah. It's an interesting one. Interesting one. Another, another money wipe. <laughs> Quite fun, though. Do we got time to close out with Gray Zone? Yes. I think okay. we do. Um, so, Gray Zone Warfare released a Raw 20 some. Have you seen it, Giga? Did you watch it? I've watched the raw 23 minute video. This is like, okay. this is almost as like a bit I. of a weird timing for this because as mm-hmm. I was just talking to church before, and there was a, a group of 20, um, I don't know what you'd call them, like influencers. Creators who were picked, yeah, influencers, creators who were picked to do like a pre test. And the embargo on releasing that information was 3 p.m. my time, which was an hour and 45 minutes ago. So we haven't actually had a chance to look at i like i very briefly had a quick skim through the transcript of rilo's youtube video um <laughs> in like the three minutes before we started the stream so like i haven't seen the full take yet so i think we'll probably spend most of the time talking about this well not really a trailer but yeah it's a 23 minute in-game video which yeah well we've both we both watched it all um like what, what do you think what's your, like, your first impressions at least um, I mean, graphically speaking, it looks really good, which I think bodes well for the game. Like, in my experience, graphics often sells. Unfortunately, it's kind of a weird thing. Like, you know, a movie, the trailer's cut in a way, and sometimes there's not even, like, real footage used. It's, like, exclusively made for the trailer to 
but that's how they market it right and then with games you know it's a medium that you actually like interact with like you play you know you you do something and it responds back to you you know whereas like watching the thing you don't really interact with it that way like yes you watch it with your eyes but you don't doesn't yeah. be- give you that feedback so we still kind of have like this trailer aspect so i think graphics plays like a, or graphics or you could even say like art style plays a big role in in marketing for these things but i think the graphics look good which bodes well in my opinion um there's even like some cool like even here you're seeing like gun death of fill which i really like and there's even i don't know there's even like actual depth of field when you're like aiming at a target like focusing and even like look at the look at this was another thing that was like driving me nuts is like look how good the fog is like it's it's not really fog but they're in like this uh field and then the backdrop there's I mean, not really that far away, probably like 200, 300 meters. Um, there's these mountains with like trees growing. And there's, you could see like a slight bluish hue, almost, it's not even fog really, but you know, you, you could tell like, like a the, haze or something. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's like, man, why can't we get that in Tarkov? Like, that's, that is perfect. Like, I'm not going to be able to spot a sniper really <laughs> sitting there. You know what I mean? He doesn't need the pitch black, the, the pitch gray, like, it's so crazy how the fog just like blooms like it's so much bloom mm. anyways <laughs> sorry i just uh, had a little bit of ptsd from tarkov anyways so <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> graphics looks great i think that was well gameplay um the one thing that i did notice is like i don't maybe and maybe it's just because i haven't played any other games at first person shooters but the animations for like the players walking it just looks weird like odd like uncanny slightly like it doesn't look that uncanny but something about it just kind of didn't sit right i don't know and again maybe it's like i'm just too tarkov brained i don't know no i know exactly what you mean i think that the third person walking animation is probably one of the weakest spots actually. yeah okay um, i'm glad i'm not animation. alone on that because it's, it's very it's... rigid it's very stiff the upper body like barely moves it's like lower bits of the legs like only are the only bits that move and like are their feet connected to the ground completely like it's it's kind of hard to tell um i i don't think that that matters too much just because like yeah you know tarkov's been through like a couple of animation updates mm-hmm. itself and those things to get those realistic is you know it's hard it's hard so i think like it's, it's not something that's like critical to the game so that's why it doesn't bother me so much yeah. um but like yeah and it can and it can be changed like relatively easily it's sort of its own thing so I think that that's kind of fine, but uh, yeah, no, I agree. I agree with you for the most part of, on what you said so far. Like it's, it seems like the game looks beautiful, um, and I, I love the setting. I think that's a pretty good, mm-hmm. a good setting. I've literally just released a video, which you haven't had a chance to watch yet. But I've just <laughs> released a video during this cast. <laughs> it was just it before, was, okay, literally okay. just before, because I had because of the way the timing worked out. Yeah, yeah. And about like, I think this is the thing. I think the game does look good, but I think that people are getting like too hyped about it. And there's like, there's a lot of things about this game. Okay, so let, let's let's talk about like one thing in particular. That I picked out that I will pick out of the video because there's lots of stuff. I literally like I've never recorded a video this way before. By the way, I had, took my phone and I had like a list of like ten bullet points, mm-hmm. and I put on the voice to like text trans transcripting thing, and I just spoke. For like half an hour or so, or like oh, twenty minutes, cool. and then I, I then like put that into like Google Docs, and then I edited what I'd said, and then I read it again properly the way that I wanted to say it. Um, that was a much quicker way of doing it because I yeah, really knew exactly cool what I wanted method. to say, mm-hmm. but I didn't know I I couldn't like get it out succinctly in the way that I wanted to in like a short, nice way for the video. Like I cut a few bits out, things where I waffled a bit, you know, whatever. Right. It was just much easier than me sitting down typing out the whole damn thing. Yeah, it takes yeah, ages. Yeah. But one of the points out of the out of that video that I made um, was about how the game's like it's very AI centric, right? It's like it's PVE mm-hmm. VP with a big like capital E and a small P. And the whole thing, like it looks beautiful, but the whole thing is in like forest. So you're gonna be fighting bots through like trees, bushes, yeah, about that. you know, <laughs> all of that kind of stuff. And it's like the AI is gonna have to be like very good. Otherwise, right. it's going to be incredible. It's either gonna be incredibly annoying or really, really easy. Like getting yeah. that balance. On the AI is not straightforward, and I well, hazard a good guess that it'll be overtuned one way or the other. 
Um, just because it's very difficult to get the balance right, you know? It's, it's tricky. But it's just there's so much foliage. It's just like a, it's a big issue. So and there's not that many buildings. Like, I don't know whether there'll be other sections of the game that will be more built up, like your military compound or whatever. Like, maybe. But um, you know how annoying it is to fight Tarkov? Like, it's, Tarkov's got better, actually. But how annoying it is sometimes to fight scavs through bushes or whatever. You're like, you're getting shot. You just, I just literally mm-hmm. can't see the guy. Like, mm-hmm. they just don't act like real people. So it, it can be quite annoying. So that was like one of the things that one of my takeaways. One thing, I was a little bit, um, could you like go back a little bit on the video? Sure. There was the guy using the LPVO. I was actually like slightly concerned about the way the LPVO looks. Like the, the, the actual picture looks really unstable as if there's like no anti-aliasing or something in the scope. I was like, I don't know how they're doing it right now. And like, yeah, they could improve their methods or whatever. But like, I don't know whether it was this frame in particular, but there were certain frames where like, Stuff just looked like really rough inside, like mesh mesh work didn't look very good. Like any sort of like wire meshes just looked kind of crappy. I was I like, it didn't look like the rest mean. of the game. Do, do yeah. you know what I mean? Maybe it was comp- like it could have been compression as well, because like yeah, you know, it's gone through YouTube's thing and turned to VP9 and done all sorts of unholy stuff to it. So you know, it's hard to know without seeing the real game in front of you. But um, yeah, through the scopes, I thought it looked like just a bit weird, um, like as if the the graphics were like downgraded for it or something. Maybe that was some other way to deal with picture in picture. Uh, I'm not sure. That was just another thing that. I got reminded of because I saw it there. But, um... So, like, gunplay-wise, what, you, what did you think about that? Like, I mean, it wasn't a whole lot. It, mostly single-fire shooting. I mean, I would say all in all, it looks like Tarkov, but someone else made it. But <laughs> it's in... Also, it's in Unreal Engine. Like, in you know, I mean, eventually they pull up at some frame here they pull up the UI and you know, it looks very similar to Tarkov, but honestly, I mean, this is kind of like, this is kind of one of those things where sometimes things are just the way they are and that's how they are. You know, it's like, Mm, there probably is some way to innovate or, you know, come up with a new idea or do something different, but then that's a whole onboarding process. You know, it's just easier just to do what's been done for the past 20 years. You know, (laughs) it's like, yeah. So, yeah, I, I get that. I, I think ultimately it's... Uh, I think we were talking about this a little bit. There, there's really a hunger within the Tarkov community for something. You know, I don't know what that yeah. something is, whether it's a new Tarkov game or their copium of their dream Tarkov, you know, BSG toko- takeover. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> community takeover. <laughs> anyway, it's... Uh, I don't, I don't know, but I think that I, I think there's potential for this to do similar numbers to Tarkov. I don't think it's gonna have like, you know, the, you you make the analogy to something like PUBG versus Fortnite. You know, PUBG was like really big, and then Fortnite was like even bigger. I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's the case here. I just you know don't think the market's like it's just not. Fortnite has a way more mass appeal. Um, and I think a similar case is here. Well, I agree, I think. Because it's like a little bit like, like Helldivers has mass appeal. Like it's very like casual. Yeah. This is like not going to be very casual, but it's also not like PvP oriented either. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's going to target like a, a sort of certain niche. Like I, pro- I think it probably will appeal to a lot of people who play like SP, Tarkov, actually. Yeah, um, good. I mean, I'm curious how play. the much pvp is actually there i mean they 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 did make it clear that it's more pve oriented but i wonder if it's like you know players are going the people that want pvp are they gonna go out of their way to do the like it's still doable but you have to go out of your way a lot you know more than a standard experience that the devs envisioned you know what i mean yeah yeah, I, th- I think I think so. I think people will find a way to do it. Like there'll probably be areas where people want to do PvP, like the middle of the map, like where there's where mm-hmm. the secret zone is. I'm sure there'll be like high loot areas, or whatever there might, there's gonna be. Um, but yeah, like they said, that there's never gonna be a quest for PvP. You're never gonna have to kill a, another player mm-hmm. for progress. Um, you know, a bunch of the players are gonna be on your own team. Another point that I made in my video was about basically PMC Karma is coming bundled with this game like from the beginning. Shall so be if you shoot people on your own team, you're gonna get punished. Now, the points I make in the vid are if the punishment is not... Like, we've learned this lesson already from Scav Karma. We can kind of use that as a bit of a template. If mm-hmm. the punishment isn't enough, nobody will care and everybody will just kill their own team. Like, people, it'll just be shoot on sight. 
if the punishment is way too high, then nobody will kill each other ever, except for the people that don't know or care, mm. which ends up being really annoying because it's like, then you're getting shot and you're not allowed to shoot back, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. End up in those weird situations. So to find a balance there is another, it's another thing that I find like really hard. Like I don't really have a solution. Like, I'm finding the balance there where there's just enough incentive to like maybe kill somebody sometimes but not enough to, to shoot somebody on site just in case they're on your team. Like there is actually, you know, if you do just decide to kill an enemy PM, like another PMC, there is more of a, much more of a chance that they won't be on your team, by the way, because there's three factions, mm-hmm. 16 players per faction on a server. <laughs> You're like, I don't know, two or three of them. Right. Well, there's only 12 or 13 left potential slots on your own team and then 32 other players. So you're talking like, you know, it's a, Two thirds, like it's a slightly better than two thirds chance that there'll be a different faction. So, you know, most of the time you won't get hit by the penalty. So it depends mm. on how hard the penalty is, right? It's like this is the thing, and like, and then also, what's the reward? Okay, well, you don't get any quest progression for it, fine, but like, you'll get the loot. Is their loot really valuable? Like, are LPVOs just like impossible to come by? You know, is military gear actually really that tough right. to come by? Because like, if it if it's easy to come by, like in like in EFT, like yeah, you kill the other players, but like, you don't really need to loot them. Mm-hmm. Like in Grey Zone, it's gonna be like, well. If we don't need to kill other players, then maybe we won't bother. Like, I'm not going to risk losing my rep. For, like, you wouldn't live risk losing your sixth scav karma in Tarkov just to shoot another pl- scav in the head and take his 50% AK, right? Like, no one's going to do that. So you end up with a situation where nobody, nobody kills each other. So it's, it's like the same thing. But I, don't, I, I can see these, like, we've learned these, some of these lessons already. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how they deal with it. Building upon that, it's uh, Call of Duty, whatever the newest one is, they took zombies and like had like a weird baby with dmz so like now it's instead of the classic zombies where it's like an arena map it's this giant map and you're all you're on a squad of four just like dmz but everyone's playing and you're all on the same team and you can't team kill each other but you're in separate squads and what's this weird thing is like sometimes you fight over resources like but it's because you can't kill each other. It's like whoever gets there first to do the quest thing. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if it's going to be similar here, which makes this weird thing where it's like, it's like the classic example of scav karma. You're, you're a player scav and there's a friendly player scav next to you. There's a loot box right in front of you, a weapons crate. <laughs> Who's going to get there first? I, I don't want to kill you because it's not worth it. But, you know, it's, I don't know. That's why I, I really hope they don't go really hard like i would even say dare say no like actual game reinforcement mechanics but just keep a more social stigma about it you know like the world develops based off players interaction like you know maybe one faction school for another faction on this particular server uh you know i don't know but because the drama is what makes this stuff great, you know, mm. at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think so long as there's ways for players to communicate, then that's okay. Yeah, yeah. for sure. If you, you can communicate with your own team, like if you give them that. Because like we got Scav Karma before VoIP, which <laughs> we always said, like back in the day, we said that was a weird choice. Yeah. People got used to Scav Karma the way it was, not being able to talk to each other properly. And so nobody killed each other. And then with VoIP, it's like a bit different. But, you know, and there's, there needs to be tools, if, especially if you're like forced to be on a faction, forced to play missions with other people doing their own missions. Like you're going to bump into people. So you want to be able to, I think like that's going to be like the least resistance thing is to you schedule your missions in a place that the other PMCs on your faction are not. So that you know that if you run into somebody, you can just kill them and they're on the other team. I think that's probably the easiest way out. Mm. Um, so long as you're careful and like you know where they are, like you're given some kind of like guide as to their mission. Um, like you've shown on the map where they landed or like given a rundown of what their mission is you can kind of avoid them something like that i don't I, yeah but I, I don't know we'll, we'll have to see but i just feel that they've got a lot of hurdles in front of them to try and solve like we've tarkov's for better or worse had to face off on a lot of these issues themselves mm-hmm. and this game is similar in function in many ways and madfinger also has to solve these problems like they're gonna be issues like i, I talk about loads of stuff in the video so go go you know anybody who's listening go go and watch that i talk about like cheaters i talk about um, yeah, P- PMC Karma, I talk about desync, I talk about like foliage, AI, all sorts of stuff. Loads of different topics. Cause I was quite I feel quite passionate about about this and that people are like putting it on this like holy grail of like, oh I'm never gonna see a cheetah again. Oh, I can't wait to leave Tarkov and play <laughs> Grayson. I'm just like, dude, you're like you're 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 delusional if you think that this game is going to A be popular, P have PvP in it, B have PvP in it, C have loot in it, and D not have cheaters, like you're actually out of your mind. 
Yeah. Like every FPS game in the, on the planet that is remotely popular has cheats. Like yeah. you're out of your mind. Like this game is not going to be any different on that front, right? It can't be. No one has solved this. Mm. What, these guys are going to be the first people to solve it? Even if they do solve it, it's only temporary. Exactly. It's an ongoing fight, right? That's the yeah. thing. An ongoing fight. Anyway, I want the game to be good. I don't want. I don't want to like shit on the game. I, I no, think I, I want the game I, to be I brilliant. I can't. I can't. I can't wait to play it myself. But I just don't want it to be like. I don't want it to be the classic thing. If everyone's like, oh, it's right, good, and then, it, then it appears, up. and then it's just like, right. oh, the game's crap. The game doesn't run well. You know, oh, there's there's already cheaters. It's desync. Oh, it feels terrible. The game, <laughs> and then it dies like before it even gets a chance to like, you know, have the seven years that Tarkov right. did. Tarkov's been cooking for so long. Um, it needs to like it needs to have that like okay it's it's good enough for now for people to play rather than just being like dead in the water. I just really don't want that to happen to it because of the community's overhype. That's why I made the video? Yeah, feel quite strongly about it. But see, this is the problem. Is like unfortunately they're like rewarded for it because if they re release it, let's say it's forty bucks, um, for early access, the wolves you know jump on it the Tarkov Wolves, and it's like, oh, this is garbage, then it's like, well, but they, now, and then, then the developer's like, well, now we can actually fund the development. We can fix the game now. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's kind of crappy, but it is what it is. I don't know. Well, we'll see. High hopes. High hopes. All right. On that note, we'll wrap it up here. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you all next week. Catch you later.